I've got a great video for you today. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Arctic P14 Max. It's a brand new fan from Arctic Fans, and I think it's going to be very exciting, so let's get right into it. So first, a little bit of spec information. I've got the P14 Max and the P14. Both are pretty standard 140mm class fans. A little bit thicker than average at 27mm, fluid dynamic bearing. You can see the amp. The 14 Max is a higher amperage, so I wouldn't recommend more than two fans per fan header, just as a general warning. The RPMs, the CFM airflow, the static pressure, and it's got a six-year warranty. Now we're into the good stuff. These are the graphs. First up is the case simulation test. Uh, the most important way for you to use this is what size case do you actually plan on buying and utilizing this fan in. If you're looking at a smaller case, think one 120 or one 140 millimeter class fan, you'll be looking at the six inch mark. So this is the front to back airflow and this is the placement of the approximate position of your CPU air cooler with respect to the front of the case where the fan would be located. So that's the cooler is six inches away from that front fan. Then we've got the nine inch mark. The case would be approximately um, able to hold 220 millimeter, millimeter glass fans. Then we've got the 11 inch mark holding 320 millimeter glass fans and the 14.5 inch mark, which would hold approximately 340 millimeter glass fans. And you can see how the airflow decreases with distance. And this is the air velocity meters per second vertical with respect to distance. Now, all that doesn't mean a whole lot unless we compare it against something. So we've got my control fan, which is based three parts A12X5 to one part A4, A14 to create a nice blended fan. That would be like a 130 millimeter class fan. So kind of middle ground between 120s and 140s. So the P14 regular is down here. Again, these are noise normalized results. And the P14 max is doing quite a lot better. Now at shorter distances, uh, like blowing air from the bottom of your case up towards your GPU or in a smaller c computer case. It's not quite as effective as my quote-unquote control fan, but I'd still call it in a very good realm. But as the case gets longer, it's holding up its airspeed very nicely. And if we bump things up to 100% PWM fan signaling, it's not quite fair to compare the P14 against it because it is RPM limited. It only goes up to 1,700 1, or 1,800, rounding it up. Uh, we want to compare it against, you know, best of the best, if uh, apples to apples at 100% PDOM fan signaling, and the P14 Max blows everything else out of the water with respect to my control fan and the P14 regular edition. And if we compare it against uh, sub-sample selection of other fans that I've tested that I felt were very applicable to compare it against. So this bright yellow line with the box, that is the P14 Max, and it's sitting at the 60s mark, right in the middle of the pack, but as we get further and further down, so bigger and bigger cases, it moves closer and closer to the top, indicating that it's got a very concentrated type airflow, so it's very effective as a case airflow fan. The Silent Wings Pro 4 starts off better and then decreases rapidly and basically meets the P14 Max right at the end. So it's sitting right in line with what I consider a very good crowd. We've got the Tough Fan 14 Pro, which is what I would consider in my opinion, the best all-rounder for 140 millimeter class fans. Put money where I'm off this. It's what I purchased to replace a couple fans in my computer case. And it's sitting right here with the A12X25, with the circles, and what else is on here? That would be a notable note. The orange line, the Shark Force 140. So it's sitting right in the realm of top tier type fans especially if you're looking at larger cases where 140 millimeter class fans truly shine. And when we bump things up to 100% PW fan signaling, things only get better for this fan. Now, one notable note here is noise level. It's at 30 decibels, so in line with the Shark Force, but fans like the, where is it? Uh, 14 Pro is one decibel quieter, so that is in my uh, margin of error for my instrumentation with the way I'm testing it. So they could be considered functionally equivalent, even though the Tough Fan 14 is probably just a hair quieter. So it's sitting in a good crowd for how much noise it's generating, especially considering how fast the uh, fan is spinning. But the Tough Fan 14 Pro is better than it, except at the very biggest cases. In computer cases, while fans only like the 3000 RPM A14, um, well, quote, defeat this fan. 
uh, other fans that are sitting near it are Tough Fan 14 Pro. I Next, we're looking at the 9 inch mark, uh, airspeed versus decibels, and the P14 Max is sitting kind of in the middle of the crowd. It's uh, at this distance, not great, not bad. It's sitting in the middle of the crowd of this kind of best, very good fans. I wouldn't say bad, it's got some of the best, best. So very good fans for the 140 millimeter class fans. So again, we can see from the graphs that it isn't doing its peak at the 9-inch mark. If I were to do another analysis at the 14.5-inch mark, it'd be sitting close to the top. But I chose the 9-inch mark because that's where a lot of fans tend to drop away. So uh, you have the data, you can do the analysis however you like, and you know determine which one actually suits your particular use case the best. Now we're taking a look at how this fan performs through my CPU air coolers, the Noctua U12A. Generally speaking on these graphs, better fans are going to be sitting at top left, worse fans are going to be sitting at bottom right. On the left side here, we have RPM versus air speed. And on the right side, we have decibels versus air speed. So focusing on the left side, this is a blade efficiency graph, is how good is this design at pushing air through a cooler? And it's sitting right in line with what we'd expect. With the P14, It's they're tracking very close to each other, which you'd expect that even though the p14 max is a little bit of a different blade design overall because it has that ring around the outside and we'll uh take a look at that or we already did don't know where it's going to be placed and comparing against my control it is more effective but now the juicy part decibels versus that air speed the p14 max is sitting right in line with my control if not slightly over it while the regular p14 sat just underneath it so that is a great result and one thing that I'm going to be discussing uh, potentially before or after this video is whether or not you like the data in sewn versus decibels. And I'm going to have a piece uh, talking about the difference uh, comparing decibels and sones, or not sones, sewn as a noise level measurement. So I'm going to have the two data points up, and you tell me which ones you like, which type of graph you like better, whether you want me to keep it in decibels or in sewn, and I'm going to have a poll up on my channel to allow you all to vote. Now, noise normalized results, airspeed to my CPU or cooler versus other fans I've tested. Hot diggity dog. The P14 Max is the best. It is now the GOAT of 140 millimeter class fans that I've tested thus far, beating out the Tough Fan 14 Pro, which was the previous one that I said was the go-to fan. So uh, I do have concerns about Arctic in terms of their consistency from one fan build to the next, but um, I, so I don't know if I got a golden sample when I purchased it off Amazon, or if I got just an ordinary one. Uh, so that'll be the hard part to determine, but it certainly is looking very good for it, sitting right there at the top. And if we bump things up to 100% PW fan signaling, it is still sitting right there at the top. So even though it was upper middle as a case fan, it is sitting as basically the best um, heatsink fan. Now I don't have a radiator, it is something that I would like to buy for this channel as I grow and basically build up that back money to uh, upgrade my whole testing methodology, noise chamber, and a radiator would be one of those things that I buy to allow me to test this sort of thing. So uh, don't know how it does in a true higher pressure scenario, like a super dense radiator, but certainly on the thicker, uh, fairly dense U12A, it is performing extraordinarily well, and, and especially at its noise level. It is substantially quieter than the 3000 RPM A14. So it, the fact that it's spinning at 2700 RPM and it's only one decibel louder than the Tough End 14 Pro at 2000 RPM is a significant result. And comparing its noise dB versus air speed, you can visually see now that it's sitting right there at the top. It is a truly top performer in this category. And if we're comparing against the, I have the A12X25 on here, it is slightly better, but there's really 
none better than this fan. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm ranting and I'm raving about it now. Uh, a huge fan of it. The Tough N14 Pro is kicking at its heels right behind it, but it's not able to beat it. Okay, I wanted to do a quick look at the uh, Arctic P14 because this is brand new. So it's very similar to the P12, which I've got right here. Uh, fluid dynamic bearing. It has the ring around the outside of it. So that just helps create that good pressure seal. The gap between the ring and the outside could be a little bit tighter. It is close enough, but there is a little bit of gap there. Um, considering that it's not made out of uh, liquid crystal, crystal polymer, LCP, it's doing just fine. If they used fancier materials, obviously that would drive up the price, but then they could get that, that, that gap smaller and further improve the performance. Frame design, Arctic does a pretty good job, especially considering the price of it. So you got these nice curved struts, reducing the noise profile as the blades bypass or pass over them. And the struts are very narrow, so as to not interfere with the blades very much. They've got a great sweep angle to them. Looks overall very similar to the way the P14 regular looked. Again, just with that ring is the main difference. And it's got built-in rubber pads, uh, unlike the regular edition, so that'll help absorb some of the vibrations. Other than that, I think that's the rough overview of the fan. In the box, it only came with like screws, and that's really it. Box is very basic, and I'm perfectly happy with that. They focused the money, or the price of the fan, on where it actually matters. All right, and the last of the test is my CFM test. It's the same sort of thing as through the CPU air cooler. So we got the RPM versus air speed and decibels versus air speed, and it's tracking very similarly. Um, it's a, actually an RPM. It's slightly less efficient than my control here, but in terms of that RPM or air speed versus noise rating, it is sitting slightly over top my control. So that is, again, a great result. And again, comparing the decibels versus zone. So you can let me know in the comment section which one you do prefer. And noise normalized results. The P14 Max isn't sitting quite at the tippy top like we saw with the previous test, but it is certainly in the upper echelon and it is in a very good position with some very well regarded fans. So an impressive result. And if we're taking a look at things at 100% PW fan signaling, again, it for whatever reason, doesn't quite reach that, that top echelon position that we see with some of the other fans, but it is still in a good position nonetheless, uh, performing right in line with many other top tier fans, especially considering the noise level that it generates. And if we take a look at its noise versus airspeed, airspeed here is in CFM. It is sitting right in line with the other fans. Oh, this is missing the graph. So noise is horizontal, that's dB, and vertical is CFM. So it's sitting right in line with other fans that we'd expect it to see. And now for value proposition. <clears throat> the 14 Max is a $13 fan, and so performance is the airspeed per dollar. That is the way it's derived, and it's sitting right near the top of the graphs. It is not the best value, but it's still only sitting near the top. And to apologize for 100% PDOM fan signaling, uh, the graph just would not organize itself into um, best to worst. But you can clearly see that it is sitting towards the top. Matter of fact, a little bit better than what we saw at noise normalized. So definitely a good result there. If we take a look at the 11 inch mark, it's really starting to shine. It's sitting right at the top in third place. And if we take a look at 100% PW fan signaling, it is sitting right at the top in top marks at the in the 140 millimeter class fans. Mind there are other fans that are overall better value, but they are in the tend to be in the 120 millimeter class category because well, there's more 120 millimeter class fans. And then we got CFM again, same sort of thing that we saw previously that it was sitting right near the top and through the CPU air cooler. Well, once again, it is the current goat. It is the go-to fan. It is the best value for uh, a fan that you need for your CPU air cooler where you need any 140 millimeter class fan. <clears throat> so this is radiator, air cooler, whatever. Best value. So where does that leave me with this with this fan for this review? Well, 
Arctic kicked it strong with this fan. It is... I, I can't say it's the best. I'm just flipping through the graphs as we're talking. I can't say it's the best. But it leads itself to be strong in so many different categories that it makes it incredibly versatile. So I would put it as a top pick remark uh, right in line with where I call the Tough Fan uh, 14 Pro. So if you need a fan that's a little bit better for an air cooler, get the P14 Max. If you need one that's a little bit more for your uh, case fan, get the Tough Fan 14 Pro. That's kind of where I am with these fans. Anyways, thank you very much for watching my video. If you've got suggestions for me for more fans to take a look at, please leave in the comment sections down below. If you've got suggestions for ways that I can improve my videos, please go ahead and leave that in the comment sections down below. I'm always trying to improve these videos for you guys. And every single time I try to make it a little bit better, but do understand that I do have a lot of backlog videos that I'm trying to crank out as well. So they may not have the uh, latest iterations of improvements while this one i kind of pushed through to get it out early and it's kind of the latest and greatest and what we'll expect for like newer newer videos coming out think about becoming a youtube member or hitting that subscribe button the, but either way it goes a long way in helping this channel grow uh, if you like the video please hit that like button and tell your friends <laughs> um anyways i appreciate each and every one of you for making it this far in my video it's people, it's all of you, my viewers, that uh, really keep me going and making this channel uh, uh, do what I can. And I almost forgot, here is the raw data. Um, I'll leave it up for a couple seconds, and I'll see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.